Hi, everyone. I'm Mark Lichtenfeld. Welcome to State of the Market. For those of you that have subscribed, thank you very much. And if you haven't, go ahead and click that subscribe button so you never miss another State of the Market video. In the short space of time since last week's video, Russia has invaded the sovereign nation of Ukraine, an act of unprovoked aggression that threatens to topple the Jenga tower of global politics. It's an emotional time for a planet full of people who have just had two very emotional years, but now more than ever, investors need to keep a cool head. Now, this isn't the first time Russia has invaded a country for attempting to join the NATO military alliance. In fact, you could say that Russia, or let's be honest, Vladimir Putin, is accustomed to getting away with exactly this sort of thing. This time, however, there has been an unprecedented backlash from citizens, governments, and businesses around the globe. Almost every major player has levied sanctions against the country. Major corporations like ExxonMobil, Apple, General Motors are pulling out. Russian airlines are banned from European and North American airspace. And perhaps most significantly, Russian banks have been banned from conducting business internationally, cutting the country off from $630 billion stored overseas. Under the weight of a historic barrage of sanctions, the Russian economy has started to suffocate. Now, the country's currency, the ruble, has gone into a tailspin, plunging to record lows. In just two weeks, it's lost roughly half its value and is now valued at less than a U.S. cent. Last week, Russia's stock market fell 28 percent. And as of this recording, the Moscow Stock Exchange has opted to keep its doors shut this week rather than face another week of declines. Here in the U.S., the iShares MSCI Russia ETF, an ETF that holds Russian stocks, has fallen 70 percent since early February, while shares of Russian bank Sberbank have dropped 93 percent. So with figures like these, it's only natural that some investors are wondering if they should buy Russian stocks at these deep discounts, while others see Russia's isolation and impending financial collapse as a potential opportunity to short stocks. Now, I want to make something absolutely clear before I move on. I am not here to minimize the suffering of the people of Ukraine, but this is a financial channel, and I'm only qualified to address the financial aspects of this situation, so that's what I'm going to do. With that said, on a purely emotional level, I would love to short the shit out of Russia and watch its economy crumble. Unfortunately, if you take a breath and think about it even a little bit, you'll realize it's the average Russian citizen who will be hit the hardest by a financial crisis. Sure, the oligarchs might have to buy one less super yacht this year, but Putin's lavish lifestyle of horseback riding and wearing a little karate outfit will go largely unchanged. You might say that the Russian people elected Putin and now they're just reaping what they sowed, but it's not hard to win an election when every one of your rivals is dead, in prison, or poisoned. In the 2018 presidential election, Putin won more than 76 percent of the vote. I mean, the guy looks fine without a shirt on, but come on, he's no Hemsworth. Yeah, I mean. Putin's closest rival managed to scrape together just 11 percent of the vote and has since been banned from seeking election again. Call me a conspiracy theorist, but I have a nagging suspicion that Russia's elections may not be on the up and up. I don't know. Maybe I'm just crazy. Regardless, I do not recommend shorting Russian stocks. The drop has been fast and steep, and that sets it up for a potentially violent bounce. I'm not sure when it rebounds back to where it was before the invasion, but I wouldn't want to be caught leaning short if the stocks start shooting higher. So that leaves the question of whether to buy Russian stocks in the hopes of catching that bounce. But before I get to that, be sure to check out my free e-letter, Wealthy Retirement, linked below in the description. It is full of wealth building and wealth saving ideas, so go on and give it a read. Now, stocks that fall as much as these have a tendency to bounce. It's likely that at some point they will, but at what point? And will there be an opportunity to buy them cheaper before then? This is somewhat of an unprecedented situation, not just because these stocks have fallen so hard, the vacuum of international business activity will only get worse unless Putin makes an about face and leaves Ukraine. Even then, it will take time before companies decide it's safe to operate in Russia again. We've seen other markets crater like this before, but it cannot be overstated how much larger the Russian economy is than other countries that have gone through rigorous sanctions like these. It's frankly astonishing to see major corporations from all over the world withdraw their business from a market of this size. The sheer size of Russia's economy will make the fall that much harder and the climb back up that much steeper. So with all that in mind, buying Russian stocks right now is like betting on the Orlando Magic every night. You'll probably eventually win one, but who knows when. 
Personally, I wouldn't touch Russian stocks with a 5,000-mile pole right now. Partly for financial reasons, I don't think it's a smart trade right now, but I also have my own ethical reasons. Frankly, I don't want Russian stocks to succeed. And while I don't let my emotions dictate my investments, I won't buy a stock whose success I'm rooting against. Now, this video was a bit more serious than usual this week. Next week, we'll be back with our usual sack of goofs, I like money. Seinfeld clips, and Simpsons references. Click on that subscribe button to make sure you don't miss it. And be sure to check out my free e-letter, Wealthy Retirement. It's filled with wealth and income building ideas all week long. Just click on the link in the description. I'm Mark Lichtenfeld. Thanks for watching State of the Market. I'll see you next week.